Hello and welcome back to part three, talking about what was going on in the courts this week. Of course, Dr. Ranson and uh, still building up to next Tuesday after the bank holiday when uh, the tribunal resits. But this is now going to be interesting. We want to talk about the AG's involvement. And maybe we can start with you on this one. Highly unusual not to have them there yesterday because they had to be represented by another law firm because they're conflicted or something. You tell us. So point number one, not necessarily unusual for external lawyers to represent government departments in some issues. Um, um, I think historically you might have seen that more going back maybe a decade. I don't know. Uh, the Attorney General's Chambers now has a, a lot of lawyers in there with different expertise. It's massive, isn't it? I mean, you're a lawyer. How many people have they they got in there? I mean, it's impossible to tell because there isn't like a a, a private law firm. You can go to their website and count the lawyers. The Attorney General's Chambers doesn't have that. That's a staff of 45, I think, doesn't it? Well, uh, they may not be all lawyers, of course, but you know. So uh, I would say it's large for the Isle of Man. And that's a big wedge of money that's got to be found to pay for that. Yeah, and and if they when they advertise for lawyers, they obviously they publish what they're asking, what they're offering to lawyers. So you can uh, lawyers are paid. Um, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> you can so get paid they don't do their job for free, I guess. Sure. So yeah, there's an expense to to that government body. Yeah. So we was we we started from the standpoint of the AG's conduct at the beginning of the uh, Rosalind Ranson Tribunal and this this sort of culture of of arrogant detachment. Um, And I'd gone on to say in the last section uh, about um, Steve Wooler's report from a decade ago. Um, I think it's important to say that he recently came back to the island to review his own report, much a lot of which has not been uh, carried out, uh, his recommendations. One of them, yet, it's agreed though, one of them is that the prosecution service should be taken out out with the AGs and become much more independent. But as things stand, that is, as I understand it, not the case. And so we have this incredibly powerful body, which is the AGs department, which has within it the prosecution service. Um, It advises all departments of government. It advises the Council of Ministers. And extraordinarily, it advises Timwald. So... What effectively happens is, and I've sat there on many occasions in Timwald, where members have, have turned to the Attorney General via the President and said, and what does the learned attorney think on a given subject? And I, many a time I've thought, well, all the Attorney General can give is the opinion he's given to the Council of Ministers. So you get an absolute singularity right the way through the whole system, a parliamentary, uh, executive, and, and the AG's departments is having the departments. So it, that in itself is wrong. And I, for a long time I argued that the parliamentary side should have completely independent legal advice available to it. And you know, Andrew will know this better than anybody, that there's, there's, uh, there's as many opinions as, are, uh, as there are lawyers. And that's a healthy situation. Mm. Right now we haven't got that. So what I'm trying to say clumsily is that the power, influence and control of the AG's department is so absolute that it's formed a culture of arrogance which manifested itself through Rosalind Ranson's tribunal. And that needs to be deconstructed. So prosecution needs to be removed. I think there's a general consensus, yeah, we get that. Um, There needs to be independent advice to parliamentarians so that they do not have to go and listen to the same point of reference that the departmental executives have received necessarily. It might be the same, it might be different, but that gives our parliamentary process okay. greater degrees of independence. Okay. But this, but this, this point here, and uh, Andrew touched on it, and we'll want to come back on it, I think, and that is if, a, if an individual member of uh, in employment within government finds themselves in a very difficult position and want to challenge their employer look at the power and authority of that organization that can bear down on them with all the finances available to it and what limited resource has that individual got and i think that that the porpoisey of that position is actually damaging the well-being of our government. Um, 
Absolutely. And to go back on an earlier point that Chris was talking about just then, at one stage, a uh, previous Attorney General was looking to, I think, um, have the defence of criminal people within the Attorney General's team as a public defender's unit. Um, so, uh, and uh, I mean, that seems entirely damaging to the administration of justice in the Isle of Man. Uh, and, and posing a great risk to the proper administration of justice, I, I would I would submit. I think um, so. Yeah. Um, and um, what was I going to say earlier? Yeah. Um, sorry. Go, I'll go back. To well, you. Let, let me just say this then: that that we have we, we have we have commanded the tribunal in this interview. We've commanded the appeals court, and rightly so. And we should take comfort from that. But. The, the test, the problem, the question is, what are the chances of getting that far? And the answer to that is negligible for a number of people. It's just too difficult, too expensive, and too much pressure and, and uh, authority through the governmental system is brought to bear against that individual, and that is not healthy. And, and so this, yeah, this is an important point about access to justice. We, we, yeah. we have talked about briefly, and obviously you, you, the committee that you, were you the chair of the justice committee? Or no, no, uh, no Jane, Jane was. Jane, that was, yeah, that's Jane correct. Paul. So they looked at it as well, and now we have Lord Garnier on the island currently producing his report, and hopefully he will produce a report of great value, like Lord Lisbane's report was, although it hasn't been implemented completely, <laughs> especially the points about separating the... Um, the uh, MHK from the government. That's ministers. gone off into long grass, I'm guessing. Never to be seen again. I'm, I'm only guessing because it's and too late. And that goes to the heart of yeah. separating execution from regulation, I think. But um, um, yeah, so access to justice, and that has to be access to proper legal advice. And that has to be then both legal aid, um, and we've seen erosions, well, not as much as we are in the UK, where you've got criminal barristers. Um, uh, striking now ne next month, but we have seen erosions in legal aid, um, and um, now it's very difficult to get civil legal aid. So it's still a, a criminal legal aid. Unfortunately, that seems to be still. I don't practice any criminal law, but that seems to be. We don't have any strikes going on. But civil legal aid, accessing civil legal aid for the employment tribunal or for the high court, for example. Okay. Okay. Um, I would like you to explain what happened in the proceedings this week, which is you know in the public domain about how. The person who had been representing the AGs and these, this tribunal has now got her own lawyer. And what that is... Can no, you, no, can that was... No. Because isn't it... it, it no. You can't do that? Ms. or Miss Healy or Heaney... Yeah. She was now not... Yeah, well, had been representing the whole thing, because the AGs now no, not... She, she's herself. got a separate uh, appeal, which has not yet been heard. I'm not saying about that. I just want to, to, to you explain what happened in, in that, that thing. Miss Malone? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, it wasn't... Uh, but, yeah, but she wasn't involved uh, in the case at all. It was a little bit confusing uh, to me, personally, as to okay. why that came a third into party, it. It was not it related. Mr. Aycock? Yes. Yeah, he was yeah. representing Miss Malone. That was all if, but to maybe so, wasn't it? And, and he, he was then not there later on. It, was that not the case? Well, I think... I, um, Again, from memory, because it was day one, he said that uh, Mr. Aycock, Johnny Aycock, was said that he was a period for her, um, and it was almost like an interested party. So we haven't seen the claim form, and we don't know, I don't think, I think maybe he said she's not a named party, yeah. but she's interested in the case. Right. So sometimes you get lawyers appearing for people, or not appearing, but being in the court, because their client might have an interest to the case, mm -hmm. what we call a watching brief, maybe. But... Um, so, but John a Aycock, he he appeared at the courts. He stood up and he and he yeah. spoke to Deemster Caller on day one. He didn't appear on day two, except he was there for the handing down the judgment later on. I think I don't. Well, was no, he, he didn't. There? No, um, no, he went. To the, but uh, okay, so let's get back to AGs. I mean, so they are represented now by a legal firm. Yeah, is that no the AG no DHSC are re represented by a department, legal. right? Yeah. Okay. So Where's the AGs now in this thing? Because they, they, they weren't there, right? They're, they're once removed, aren't they? But right. re remember, the, the nub of the case, the nub of the case presented as an appeal emanated from um, the AGs department because you could see, in, in the first instance, you could see the case that the AGs were trying to make about uh, before um, the, uh, what's the name of the... The advocates who represented uh, Callum Wilde. Callum Wilde. Before Callum Wilde came on the scene, the AGs were arguing the case yeah. that ultimately came before Deemster call it as the appeal. Mm. 
Um, so that's where the argument came from in the first instance, was passed on to uh, Colin Wilde. Okay. What about the AG department itself? I mean, it hasn't been an AG in place since the sad death, of course, the last one. But I mean, we've had acting and he's now been made up. Fingerprint wise, I mean, responsibility wise, how, how will this play out? Does, does the, the buck stop in the AG's department, obviously, with, with him, he's the AG, but... What, you know, what, what, what book are you talking about? Well, just the responsibility for the whole thing and, and, and the proceedings and that sort of thing. I mean, do, do they, could they call time on this at any time? Could they, could they pull out of this sort of thing? Or would it only no, be Laurie Hooper no, who the, could uh, no, stopped it? No, the only person who could stop this, and it's very, very late in the day for that now because the judgment's out, mm. and we're going to get the, uh, the remediation uh, settlement later on. Um, so there isn't, as it were, nothing to pull out of now. That, right. that, that sort of train's gone through the station and, and disappeared. And it was always, it was always within the remit of, of uh, Dr. Ranson to, to pull this at any time. But, I mean, why would she unless there was some response coming from government to say, let us, as it were, quietly deal with this? It could yeah. have been... It could have been in the early days, it could have been dealt with a lot more quiet, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And remember, I know an awful lot about the early uh, uh, issues on this one. Had, had government acted responsibly and fairly very early on, I believe, from what I understood, that Rosalind Ranson would have been more than happy to respond. But it's this constant determination to, as it were, frankly, bully mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the claimant, the, the person before them um, that, that denied them the opportunity to deal with this uh, a lot more quietly. They chose not to because they're used to winning and for all the reasons that we've discussed before about the power and authority of the state and, and the AGs etc they thought that they could carry on doing the same. They've found out differently and they've really got to learn a massive amount of lessons over this. Oh, very, well, lessons very, very learned. Is, we always hear that and, you know... We'll, well, not just lessons learned, but actions taken mm -hmm. as a consequence. Um, and and um, I, I don't think I'm, I'm uh, saying it something out of turn here, but because of my interest in this, um, the, uh, the Wooler report, uh, Steve Wooler did say, you know, I, I would welcome your contributions to my review, and I, I made those contributions known to him. And in that conversation, and again, I don't think this is improper, um, I did ask him to consider the Rosalind Ranson uh, affair, shall we call it that, because it's more than just the case itself, it's, it's huge repercussions. Please consider it. And he said, I have read the judgment in its entirety. Right. So, so what you're saying there, Chris, Mr. Wooler, he's... He was back a, a, a few weeks ago. Because his report originally was, what, 2012? Yeah. So he's now... He's reviewing his report. Really? Mm. Uh, oh, that's news to you. <laughs> that, 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 right. That's interesting, what, yeah. what, Hang on, explain then the outcome that potentially reviewing... The, his well, I don't know what the review is, the outcome's going to be, but... No, no, um, but what's likely to be reviewed, exactly? The, the, all I can say is I read the original Wooler report in full, right. and... My goodness me, did it need action then, you know? And then scroll forward to the Constitution and Legal and Justice Committee's engagement with the AG's department where the committee was saying, you know, we have concerns here and there and we want to understand the AG's position. And the committee was left with a very clear understanding that there were actions that needed to be taken. Completely separate to that, um, the... Uh, Steve Wooler has been commissioned to review his own report as to what has and has not happened. Uh -huh. And um, that is bound, bearing in mind what I've just said to you, mm -hmm. bound to some degree, less or a greater degree, going to play into his okay. report, which I think, if I recall correctly, will will come out in either September or October. Uh, hopefully in full form and yeah. redacted. Yeah. And, okay, and that's what I want to finish on. I mean, and I, we, I've done this before many times recently, is the, the light has been shone into one part of what was going on in government, and clearly the word corruption has been used now. And well, I've used that word. Yeah. I know. So when people ring me, for instance, now, I'm telling them on the phone, oh, you might just want to be careful. I don't know if your phone's being bugged or something. I, am I completely no, overreacting no, no, on this? Don't I mean, get paranoid. It's, it's, I'm trying to say, you know, how deep should we be worried about in government terms? 
what is going on. I mean, the Sir Humphreys is, are running is, the whole thing. No, this is a massive, massive wake-up call for good government. And you know that I say that with great passion because it's been my bread and butter for so many years now. And this whole issue is a manifestation of poor structure and organisation which needs to now, once and for all, move on to new pastures. Let's get a government that serves the people and is seen to serve the people. My point being, it, you know, the, the civil service, it looks like, are running the show. I mean, was that... Well, Chris has highlighted at the start yeah. the respect and the benefit we've had of this independent judiciary in the Isle of Man mm. and um, th and that the rule of law is being served by that independent judiciary and well, and we witnessed that yesterday in court with deems to call it, and, and we should take comfort in that. The problem is, are we denying litigants with important rights to uh, raise in the court access to the court system? That's one point. And then the other point is, is there an unfair balance in favour of the government? And can, is, is the, all these allegations true that are taking place in terms of concoction of documents and um, all these um, all terrifying and really concerning issues from the judgment on the 9th of May in terms of the documentation and failure to disclose of evidence? And there's another question, and it comes out of the appeal, doesn't it? That the examination, the, the remit of the tribunal to examine this to some degree will be limited by, its by those examinations being associated with damages and costs. If it is the case that there are issues to examine beyond, now beyond the remit of the tribunal, the question has got to be, how is that going to get examined in order to ensure better government in the future? Because everything yesterday, again, I'm just a layperson, looked to me as if they were really worried about all these things coming out and you know, having this company that's going to look into the metadata at God knows how much costs as well on that. And you know when you bring in specialists, they can find anything you, you want if, you, if you're the paymaster. I mean, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but you know, I'm just still worried. I, I am worried for the Isle of Man. I'm worried because it looks bad. I've never felt like this before. That, that maybe someone is listening under my phone. I mean, that's what my point is. I, things are being exposed here which have never been seen before in such a public way, I, I don't think, anyway, not in was modern... That, was, that the, was that the root of the, uh, the... Was the fear of that on government's part the yeah. root of that appeal? And, and the, that cannot really be answered, um, particularly if we find that the tribunal's remit can only go so far and not fully open and examine the areas which Andrew has alluded to as being profound and downright serious and, and actually verging on criminal. Uh, should it should that be proved now the, the tribunal can only deal with these matters in relation to i'm repeating myself the costs and the damages but its report surely must in the final analysis if it if it's proved to be the case that that, that there are real concerns here to be uncovered then it's very very important that somehow or other they are uncovered and examined. And one thing that was left open by the judgment of the 9th of May is that the issue of contempt of court will go will be a matter germane to the disclosure hearing. That, oh, that I haven't just created that. That's words taken from the judgment of the 9th of May. And um, in that judgment, it said uh, Dr. Ranson's legal team had issued uh, an application for contempt of court, and the tribunal said they might be have then uh, grounds to revisit that issue, that's serious. Uh, the High Court has uh, powers of um, to exercise. Um, I think there's an example from a few years ago where it was a custodial sentence, I think it was a suspended sentence, on for a matter of contempt of court, and, and the tribunal can refer it, what it determines matters of contempt of court to the High Court. So that's something that then may well come before the tribunal. Okay, they didn't help themselves. The government by doing what they did last week, uh, if you did this They've week. They've shamed themselves by... by Thank you, uh, that's my point. I mean, they yeah. haven't made this look pretty in any shape, form or fashion, right? When are they going to learn the lesson? They right. use the word, we believe in transparency, use those words, pretend that that's what, what they're doing, when in fact, actually, what they're trying to do is cover things up. Shameful. And leadership comes from the top. Culture comes from the top. And it's unfortunate that we saw, again, covering what we talked about earlier, Minister Hooper come out last night with a tweet, a public tweet, 
really setting the tone of his department. He's the minister. Um, and, and, and setting out that um, he was, wasn't believing, he wasn't, he, implication, he didn't say explicitly, I would accept, that the media were not going to be covering this issue properly and fairly. I mean, the media has a, such an important role in our democracy to inform the public about what's gone on in these court hearings and what people can't attend and hear what's been argued before the court. And, and to question, that has a chilling effect, to question whether the media are doing its job. Uh, the fourth estate um, is that's really concerning. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll probably leave it there. Well, so, let, let's leave it on one thing, yeah. one point, and that is that there's a lot yet to come mm. because the, the the hearing on the documentary issue is very very important, um, and the settlement uh, engagement is also very very important, and it should. Um, I guess, reveal other matters which I hope the public continue to show the level of interest that they have thus far shown because this is, this is a, an incredibly important moment in, in the life of our government. I've never felt system. so, I don't know what the word is, just uneasy in the way anything now. I, I, I challenge anything because I don't think hmm. the government necessarily are doing it for my good now. That's what I'm trying to say. It just feels like they've got their own little club and they did everything they could to well, stop this thing happening. Well, you've heard me say many, many times, ask, or ask the question many times, is government there for the people yeah. or yeah, are the exactly. people there for the government? It doesn't leave a good taste in my mouth anyway. And, and so the tribunal here in this three days, maybe four days, we're unclear about the fourth day, next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Um, well, open to the public, I guess. Yeah. Listen, thanks for putting up. By the way, we are sweltering here because it's a really beautiful day. Thank you for doing that. We should uh, make clear again, you're talking uh, in your own personal capacity. Doing As leader of the Green Party. See, I know. Yeah, yeah. Make sure we don't get any fallback there. And you're just retired, MHK. The grumpy old man. <laughs> the grumpy con contribution. But honestly, uh, there's, thank you also for watching and supporting what we're doing because um, it, it, I don't know if it's been getting enough media attention, if anything. I, I, I just think it's... it's Crazy what's going on here, but uh, more to be done. If yeah, if you want to go to the proceedings, the tribunal's open to the public, isn't it? From Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, ten o'clock, I think. Probably no doubt. Uh, what's it? That place called? Do you remember? It's next, called? next door to the court. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the building's called, but someone will tell you. And we will no doubt talk more about this subject. But thank you to my guests, and thank you for watching.